Hi, Footsteps of Brilliance friends. Welcome to the fourth workshop in our family literacy series. And it's called, What's the Big Deal About STEM? If this is your first time joining us, we want you to know that you will receive information for our previous workshops as a follow-up to this training. Also, if you're new to Footsteps of Brilliance and haven't used it with your children, we'll go through the simple steps to get started at the end of this workshop. If you need the Spanish presentation, you can click the link in the Knowledge Base article and listen to it in Spanish. As I mentioned, this is our fourth webinar in our family workshop series focused on building strong literacy practices with your children. We encourage you to share this series with your friends and families. They can register anytime and join any of the upcoming sessions, and they can also access the recordings of the previous session. So please continue to share this with your family and friends. It is a free resource that is provided to you through the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools and the Vision to Read initiative. So everyone's invited, it's free for all, and we would love for you to continue to share this with others so that they can benefit from this information as well. Today, we're going to talk about four things. First, we're gonna address what STEM is and why it's important to our children's development. We're gonna talk about how Footsteps to Brilliance supports early math and science development in our children. And we're gonna talk about how to get started. If you have questions, I will also share with you how to get answers to those questions by contacting our help desk that can address questions in English and Spanish. I wanted to share with you this quote that I found from Katherine Johnson, and it says, we will always have STEM with us. Some things will drop out of the public eye and go away, but there will always be science, engineering, and technology and there will always, always be mathematics. Katherine Johnson was an African-American mathematician that worked for NASA from 1953 to 1986. And today we live in a world where we are surrounded by science, technology, engineering, and math, even if we don't recognize it. The advances in technology that we use every day make our lives easier, like the smartphone or televisits with our doctors, or the ability for me to record this presentation and share it with you, um, new vaccines and medicines, or faster ways to bank and exchange money, air and space travel, and the list goes on and on. Our children are growing up in a vastly different world than our parents or grandparents did. And this is all because of great minds like Katherine Johnson, who despite all odds against her, working under very difficult circumstances in that era and in that time frame at NASA, she was able to use her love for mathematics to save a critical Apollo space mission and save the lives of the astronauts on board the flight. She was able to use math to ensure that they had the correct trajectory around the moon so that they could re-enter the Earth's atmosphere without burning up. And she was critical to the success of that mission. We continue to see trailblazers in STEM-related fields, fields that impact our lives in remarkable ways. First, you can see here May Carol Jemison. She is the first Black woman to travel into space aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor. She holds degrees in chemical engineering and African American studies. She also earned her medical degree from Cornell, and then she applied to NASA and was accepted. She orbited the Earth for eight days in September of 1992. You'll see in the middle here, Diana Trujillo from Colombia. She immigrated at the age of 17 to the US with only $300 to her name. She worked as a housekeeper and attended school to learn English. Then she enrolled in the University of Florida to pursue aerospace engineering because she was inspired by a magazine article that she read. She then applied to the NASA Academy and joined in 2007 as the first Hispanic immigrant to join NASA. 
She's also a mother of two children. And what you can see in the image there behind her is the Perseverance rover that is currently roaming Mars. And she was responsible for the robotic arm and she was responsible for the team that created that robotic arm that works on the rover to collect samples of Mars surface. Uh, now the Perseverance rover is actually really important to us because it has experiments on it that are going to help us one day land humans on Mars. It has an experiment that is has been working since February of 2021 when it landed that is converting Mars, the Mars atmosphere into oxygen because when we have people landing and working on Mars, they're going to need oxygen and they are going to need to be able to return to Earth and they're gonna to need to be able to have the fuel to do that. So this is a very important mission and this is someone with a dream um, that went for it and is able to have an impact on the world in a big way. Also wanted to mention um, Sir Tim Berners-Lee who invented the World Wide Web and this has impacted our lives in many, many different ways. We each use the internet every day, whether we recognize it or not. Um, he is currently um, a computer science professor at both Oxford and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And because of his invention, we have information um, right at our fingertips that we've never had before. So you might be thinking, what has this got to do with my child? Why is this important to me? And I don't know if you know this or not, but the children that are currently in second and third grade, so basically elementary school, will be the scientists that place the first man or woman on Mars. So our children are the next generation scientists, engineers, doctors, mathematicians that are going to have a wonderful impact on our future. And by doing this and helping and support our children in the growth of STEM, concepts, science, technology, engineering, and math, we help unlock the world of possibility for them. Focusing on STEM and creating a positive mindset around STEM, it helps children explain the world around them. It helps them make sense of everything that they experience each day. It introduces new words and concepts this is very important for our English learners, especially. They need to be exposed to new ideas, to vocabulary, and to concepts that are going to help provide the knowledge they'll use to learn new things. For those of us who speak two or more languages in the home, it's important that we speak in those languages to our children, especially the first language, even if it's not English. Then when they work on the second language, they'll have information, they'll have context, they'll have understanding that they can apply to the new language. So speaking with and teaching children in your first or native language actually helps to develop the vocabulary they're gonna need to understand what they'll learn in the second language, okay? So some of you may have children that are English speakers first, and they might be in a dual language program where they're learning Spanish or Mandarin or Portuguese or French or something like that. The more proficient that they can become in English actually helps them learn that second language. And vice versa, if we have children where their first language is Spanish or Arabic or Hindi or something like that, that is going to help them learn English better. Okay. Let me give you an example. Um, think about snow and what that means and what it feels like. If your child is new to a language and they've never seen snow or experienced it, being able to describe it in their first language so that they understand it is going to give them the knowledge that they need to understand it when they learn it in English. Okay. Just like if they can experience it they're going to understand what it is much better. So we want to build that vocabulary base for our children as much as possible. This is called academic language, and this is going to help your child in school. 
So feel comfortable to speak about the things that you know. And if you don't know, that's okay. Go ahead and do research about it. Show them how to find it in a book or look up on the internet. Ask somebody, ask an expert. Um, don't feel like you have to know all the answers, but feel very comfortable talking in both languages um, and answer questions when they arise. Now, as your children work on STEM concepts, this is actually going to help support their reading and writing development as well. So we are addressing a lot of things that our kids need to develop when we're working on STEM related concepts. And lastly, and probably most importantly, is working in STEM and building a STEM mentality, a mind that is, thinks about science and math builds the imagination and it opens up a world of possibility for our children that they did not even know that they that existed or that they had at their fingertips. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what it takes for a child to be good at math. And I wanted to share with you the biggest behaviors that indicate whether or not a child will be successful in math and science, and they may not be what you think they are. First, it's important for children to have a positive mindset, a belief that they can. You may recall a quote that you heard from Henry Ford before that says, whether you think you can do a thing or whether you think you cannot do a thing, you are right or something like that. Essentially, what we think kind of drives what our possibilities are. So if we think we can do math, then we're more likely to be successful at it. If we think we can do science, we're more likely to be successful at it. Okay. The next behavior that drives, oh, excuse me, that drives um, success in math and science is practice. So believe it or not, practice does make perfect. So just like playing the piano or playing a sport, the more that you practice that, the better you're going to be. When comparing U.S. students to other countries that are better at math, the differentiating factor is the time spent practicing and concentrating on that subject, not a child's ability, talent, or smarts. In other words, if you want to be good at math, you can be. It's a matter of being willing to work at it and not give up when it gets tough. And lastly, getting help. So reaching out for help when needed, not allowing our students to stay stuck. Uh, let them know that it's okay to ask questions. They don't need to have all the answers. And it's certainly okay when we make mistakes because we know when we make mistakes and we have to kind of struggle a little bit to figure it out, that actually creates a stronger connection in the brain. So it's important to ask when we need help. Get a tutor, ask a mentor, ask a teacher, but don't stop asking until they understand. Most schools or some schools will offer tutoring. I know in my daughter's high school, um, they offered free tutoring Tuesdays and Thursdays right after school for anybody who wanted to get help with their math or science or whatever subject they might be working on. So get in touch with your school, get in touch with uh, your libraries and other organizations around your community and find ways to get your children's help. And of course, always ask the teacher. Many teachers are willing to assist and can point you in the right direction. So these three practices are what will help your child build a strong science and math brain. It'll give them a strong start and set them on the path to success. All right, so what can we do as caregivers or parents to help our children find success in math? You guessed it. It's the same three things. We need to have a positive mindset. We need to give our children chances to practice and we need to help our children find help when they need it. Parents, your mindset influences your child. Expressing a positive attitude will go a long way to helping your child have a positive attitude themselves. 
recognizing that it may have been hard for you, but it doesn't have to be hard for them. If they hear you expressing doubt or making statements like, I was never good at math, or I can't do math, or you have to be smart to do math, this kind of rubs off on them and gets them in a negative mindset, and maybe it's too difficult for them. We know from the data that being good at math has nothing to do with smarts, but more to do with putting in the work and practice to learn. So changing our own self-talk and talking with our children in positive ways, like, I know you've got what it takes. It's okay if you don't know the answer right now. Keep trying. You'll get it. Let's work together to understand this. Or I know you can do this is going to give them that positive mindset that they need to keep persevering when it gets tough. Of course, we want to reassure them when difficulties arise and certainly celebrate wins and successes when they have them. But what a gift we give our kids when they know that we believe in them, having that moral support behind them as they embark on their STEM journey. The other thing I wanna mention is that it's okay if we're not experts in these areas. We don't have to know everything. Um, it's okay if we don't have the knowledge or the understanding. Understanding, Our children don't expect us to. And when they're asking questions, they're just trying to look for guidance and help. So just simply saying, I don't know for sure, but let's find out together. And then researching and asking to find the answer is a great way to respond when maybe we don't know um, what the answer should be. Taking advantage of the information that's out there and modeling for children how to get answers to questions is going to give them a life skill that they'll use over and over again. Um, teach them how they can research safely on Google or how to ask Alexa or Siri. Um, get a library card and go to the library and ask the librarian to help you find resources to answer your questions. As I mentioned before, ask a teacher to point you in the right direction or find a tutor or a mentor. And lastly, I want to mention how important it is to pay attention to how we are responding to our children's questions. So some of the things to avoid are answering questions with nonsense answers. For example, if they ask, why is the sky blue? And we some say something like, well, because it's not green. That's an answer, but it doesn't really help build their knowledge. And that's where it's okay if we don't know. We may honestly not know why the sky is blue, but we can certainly find out, okay? So let's avoid answering questions with nonsense answers and um, try to encourage our child's curiosity by encouraging questioning. Talk through things, help them find answers on their own and address questions with as much factuality as possible. Share facts and use correct words and vocabulary to, de to describe the things um, that you are talking about, okay? So our first and biggest task is to change our mindset, and this single act alone will help us unlock the potential that lies within each child. All right, so... Just like with reading and writing, children develop in the areas of math and science in stages, and it's never too early to start. Okay? What we do with our children at each stage of de development is different. So just like our children that are learning to read or to write, they are going to grow in steps, and what we do to support that is different. So you can see here from my chart some things that you can do at each stage with infants and toddlers our pre-K and TK kids, those that are getting ready to go to kindergarten, that are attending preschool or doing home preschool with you. And our kids that are in school in kindergarten for a second or third grade, okay? So let's talk a little bit about infants and toddlers. At this stage, it's important to fill your child's world with lots of positive talking, singing, reading, playing, and creating you're introducing them to words and you're explaining the world around them. So count objects like toes, fingers, shoes, Cheerios, uh, toys, animals, cars, anything. Count anything and everything. Sing songs and play games about counting. 
animals, shapes, colors, nature, your family members, sing and have fun. Explain the world around them. Tell them about what they see. Talk about nature, things in the grocery store, foods that they're eating, your household surroundings, the rooms, holidays, seasons, shapes, colors. Talk about everything. Use the correct words and point to things when you're talking about it. Visit new places and talk about them like parks and museums and zoos and nature, hikes, petting zoos. Babies love to get out. Let them touch things if it's safe and let them explore the world around them. Another thing you can do is group and sort things together and separately and you can count them and you can give them a chance to do it themselves like find all of the blue Legos or find all of the stuffed animals that are bears, things like that. Um, let them try it, let them find it, let them put it together, talk about it. If they don't get it right, that's okay. Talk about what to do and what to do to make it right. Um, let them use their hands to grip and play with toys. They can even help around the house with simple things. They can put clothes in the dryer. Um, they can put toys away in their bins. Um, this is going to help them develop those um, the the muscles in their hands that they're going to need for writing and creating and cutting when they go to school or when they go to preschool. It helps them understand spatial relationships, what size things will fit into, um, if objects are too big to fit into something or not. Believe it or not, this is math. This is working on math concepts when they do that, okay? It also makes them feel smart and independent. Um, and they are gonna, they love to imitate the adults around them. They wanna be just like you. So letting them help you around the house, letting them help you put things of different sizes into different kinds of compartments and areas is going to help them develop mathematically, if you will. Don't forget story time and activities at the library or other organizations around the county and make sure to talk and explain everything, okay? So those are our toddlers and our babies and we are just having fun helping them learn about the world around them. For our preschool age children, three to five that are getting ready for kindergarten, this is when we want to start counting and growing their vocabulary. And like I mentioned, getting ready for kindergarten. We want them to understand numbers and how to count to at least 30 by the time they enter kindergarten. We also want to start expanding their vocabulary around numbers and science concepts. They can use their hands to create, draw, glue, use scissors, make creations that relate to math and science. Remember that music and songs are great at teaching kids concepts. So find math songs, find songs about science things and sing them and let them learn them. This is going to create really strong connections in the brain. Music is wonderful for memory and recall. And of course it's fun. Um, start to have your child do the counting. So have them count out loud, have them sort and group. For example, um, have them put away toys and they have them sort them into similar types of toys into a box or a bin, like all the Legos over here, all the cars and trucks over here. Okay. Let them help you cook in a safe way. They can measure things. You can talk about the measuring cups, let them put the ingredients in. Um, they can weigh things. Um, they can do this at the grocery store and explain how these things work as you go. Again, remember, it's okay if you don't know, just share what you do know and then show them how to find answers from books, libraries, and the internet when we don't. Okay. You can even begin doing mini experiments like um, things that they could do around the house. Take free advantage of activities at libraries, museums, after school programs, and camps where they can get hands-on activities and experience with math and STEM, uh, math or science related experiments. Okay. Now for our kinder and third grade and beyond, at this point, they're gonna be receiving mathematics and science instruction at school. 
and in a wide variety of subjects and topics related to math, science, and technology. One of the things that I like to do is go through the papers that my son brings home from school. And I like to talk about it with him and have him explain it to me and tell me what he learned at school that day. Number one, it's having him recall what he learned. Number two, it's showing interest in how he's doing. And as a parent, I now know what he's been learning at school and I can help support that at home, okay? Um, absolutely help them complete any homework that may come home. They may be coming home with math worksheets and this is gonna give them some of that extra practice that they need in math or they might be doing some science workbooks you know, this is great ex um, practice and exercise in these areas, okay? You can also buy or download math or science worksheets that they can use for extra practice at home during breaks or during the summer and things like that. Of course, we don't wanna stop reading. We wanna read, read, read. Read books about different science topics. Um, find out what your child's interested in and um, go to the library and find books in that area. Let them explore things that they're interested in. And this is gonna go a long way in helping them build a science mentality and a love for learning, okay? You can follow science-based organizations on YouTube or Instagram. Um, in my family, we follow NASA, um, hence all of the NASA <laughs> references today. Um, but we love to learn about what stars are in the night sky tonight and what uh, planets can we spot in the night sky or um, what new planet or galaxy or black hole have they discovered from their uh, satellite telescope images from space? So these are fun ways to just kind of get kids interested, pique their interest and learn something new. Okay. Um, does your child like to cook? Again, there are simple recipes that you can find online or in children's cookbooks that you can check out from the library. Let them do more of the cooking. Let them do more around the house. And don't forget to have your children write about it, okay? When they write about it, they are actually putting all of this information in a much higher form. It is helping them to think critically. It's a higher level of cognition and they're creating. So let them write and let them create things about what they're learning, okay? All right, so um, you guessed it. Uh, we have a lot of resources in Footsteps to Brilliance that are gonna help you do this in an easy and fun way. So if maybe you're feeling a little overwhelmed, like, oh, this is too much, guess what? We have it kind of figured out for you. And what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna go into Footsteps to Brilliance. I'm gonna show you a few of the resources that you have that you can share with your kids um, that are going to help you do all of these things um, very easily um, in the program. We're going to address um, it for toddlers, the Footsteps to Brilliance program. This is a free download to any smart device. So if you haven't gotten started with any of the Footsteps to Brilliance apps, you're going to see those. Um, again, these are free app downloads to any smart device that you own. And uh, as your child is reading and learning in the program, they're also gonna be working on math and science, okay? Um, for our toddlers and our, excuse me, for our preschool students that are in pre-K or TK, we're going to recommend that they do the daily lessons in the Clever Kids University pre-reader program. And for our children that are kindergarten to third grade, um, we're gonna recommend two apps. For our kindergartners, we have the Orange Clever Kids University I Can Read program. The daily lessons here are gonna support reading, writing, and STEM, okay? And in Footsteps to Brilliance, our first, second, and third graders can use the yellow and blue levels. So let's go take a tour, let's see um, what it looks like, have your the age of your child or children in mind as we go through this, and then let them explore on their own. Okay, families, I have gone to my browser. I'm using the Chrome browser, and I have typed in myf2b.com, and this has brought me to the login page for Footsteps to Brilliance. 
As a reminder, you can download the apps onto any smart device by going to your app store and searching for the app that your child is going to use. And these are free downloads. You can use them anytime. You can put them on multiple devices and your child will log in with their super secret code. If you do not have a super secret code for your child, I'm going to show you at the end of this how you can get one. Okay. Now, as parents, we can log in with our own username and password into our own account. And when we log in, we'll, we will see all of the children that are attached to our account. And you simply click on their name. It will log that child in and they can play on their account. We want every child to have their own account and parents, you're welcome to play on it on your own, but just make sure you're logged in as yourself and then come down here and select the app that you want to use. Okay. So everybody can have their own account. It's free. And parents, when you log in with your own username and password, you'll be able to select the different children and they can go in and play in the program on their account. All right, so I am going to start with the Footsteps to Brilliance blue app. This is the app that we recommend for our toddlers. And we also recommend for our first, second, and third graders. Now, why is that? And that's because there are three levels that address um, different challenge levels for our children, okay? So for our toddlers, we're gonna start here in the red level. And you'll notice that we have a number of books here on our bookshelf. Um, again, remember, we are trying to build a language-rich environment for our infants and toddlers. And so we just want to read and sing and give them access to as many ideas and as um, many vocabulary words as we can. Now, those um, in the red level here that focus on STEM will be found in our karaoke nursery rhymes our traditional Spanish songbooks, our academic language program for students, and our learning lyrics. I'm using the red arrows here to move through these libraries of books on the top shelf. I'm going to open up our nursery rhyme uh, library here, and you'll notice that there are a number of nursery rhyme books that we can sing along with and share with our children, okay? Now, how do these relate to STEM? Well, let's talk about that. Um, I, I'd like to point out the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Hey, diddle diddle, it's raining, it's pouring. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, even Jack and Jill. Um, Mary had a, a little lamb, Baba Black Sheep, and I had a little nut tree. You can actually find STEM ideas, STEM vocabulary in any of these books. When I open up the book for the Itsy Bitsy Spider and I click on the red read a book, you'll notice that it comes to the cover here and I can have all kinds of conversation with my children about science concepts. For example, this is a spider. A spider is an insect. How many legs does the spider have? and count the legs and have your child count with you, right? We can talk about the weather. Look at these flowers and the blue sky and what's gonna happen to the spider, right? He's gonna climb up the spout, it's going to rain and he's gonna get washed down the water spout, okay? So all of these wonderful things that we can sing and talk about with our children and just a normal nursery, everyday nursery rhyme is going to start to build that STEM vocabulary and build those STEM concepts. So it's right inherent in what you're doing. I'd also like to point out the spider's web. We can talk about how spiders make webs and what we do with those, okay? And here's our friend scroll. So again, have fun talking about this. Listen to it. Um, right? Sing along, um, let them talk about it. 
And now we're having a very rich discussion with our children and um, they're having fun while they're learning. Okay. So any of these books that have things like going up a hill, up and down, we have angles that we can talk about. We can talk about water and getting water from whales. We can talk about animals. Um, we can talk about the rain and the weather and the stars in the sky. All of this is going to expose our children to wonderful ideas. In our Spanish um, songbooks here, you're also going to notice that we have counting songbooks. The 10 Little Puppies is a fun book about puppies that go away. So we're going to start learning about um, grouping things together and taking things away. As we scroll down here, you'll notice that we have skeletons leave their tombs, which discusses time. All of these things are going to be wonderful books. In our academic language program for students, this is where they can start to develop more of that vocabulary. In the full moon parade, it is all about adding. It's about baby animals, farm animals, lots of rich discussion there. The backyard band, we have insects that we're gonna learn about in our backyard. There's even instruments here so we can even weave in music and the arts, right? Um, get out the closes about weather. Obviously, One Pup Plus is going to be about adding, and I'm going to let you read that book for your surprise ending. Um, shapes Everywhere is going to introduce our children to shapes, and then you can do a scavenger hunt around you and have your children point out shapes in your home or outside or at the park, wherever you might be. Do you get the idea? You are going to find wonderful connections as you open these books and read them with their children. And it's just as simple as that. Just reading with our children and exposing them to these ideas is going to be built in right to the program, okay? In our learning lyrics um, series, you're going to have counting song books. We're gonna learn about body parts with head, shoulders, knees, and toes. You'll notice time is here in Hickory Dickory Dock. And your kids can even learn the days of the week and the months of the year. Um, by singing along with these songbooks. These are wonderful songbooks that your children are going to love. They're going to want to sing to often, have them make up actions, have them get up and dance and move around. Okay. Now, don't forget our logic and reasoning games. So as our children get a little bit older, as they're in approaching preschool, um, they can be doing ordering games. They can play color games and making patterns. Um, all in logic and reasoning. So these are some fun things that our kindergarten students can do as well. And kindergarten students still love these um, traditional books. And so I encourage you to have them to continue to read here as well. Okay, I'm gonna skip over our preschool students here for just a moment because I wanna finish up in this app and then we'll get over to the Clever Kids University programs. Um, in our yellow and blue levels, this is where our first, second, and third grade students are going to have wonderful, rich libraries of books in our alphabet animals and in our earth and sky, where they can um, learn about different STEM topics. When they work through the books, make sure that they start um, by reading the book and then completing the activities in the stars, as you see here. So just follow the stars and... Um, it's very easy for your kids to get a really well-rounded, rich, deep experience as they learn about these different STEM concepts, okay? Um, our Earth and Sky books are fun vocabulary reference books, and they're going to teach a vocabulary word related to STEM, okay? They're fun because they're interactive. <laughs> So they're gonna learn a word here and then they'll have it defined for them. When snow is not packed tightly, it can slide down a mountain. Just a little snow can start an avalanche big enough to push trees and rocks downhill. Okay, and you can see a picture here. And this is a nice jumping off point for you as a parent where you can do additional research and it can pique their interest and also expose them to new vocabulary. So these are some great STEM related things here in this yellow level. Um, again, I would recommend these for our uh, first, uh, maybe early second grade students and they'll have fun working through these books.
Okay, now our second and third grade students can come into the blue level and we have a nice life sciences library and a physical science and engineering library. When they click into these libraries, their books are going to look a little bit differently because obviously these are second and third graders and so they're going to be reading at a different level, but never fear, our children can still interact with this if they're not reading independently. This is going to be great for developing vocabulary and comprehension in these areas because as they work through these book units, they can still have the book read aloud to them, okay? So by tabbing through here, they'll get here. They're going to see beautiful pictures. These are these are wonderful, interestingly written books. They can listen to it aloud. Um, if they are, if Spanish is their first language, or if they are learning um, Spanish as a second language, you can toggle here, and you can also have it read aloud here. So even if our children aren't reading independently, they can still participate in the content. They can still learn from it. They can still listen and gain vocabulary. This is building a wonderful, rich foundation for them to build upon, okay? So um, great books. And again, children of any age can engage with these. Um, but for our second and third graders, we want them to be finishing the steps. So once they read the book, then they move on to the comprehension questions our vocabulary games, and again, don't forget about writing about it. They've got the nice digital writing tool in the science journal, okay? All right, so that's our Footsteps to Brilliance program, and now I'm gonna switch over to Clever Kids University. Um, on the web, I'm going to use the Switch Apps tab, and I'm gonna click into the Pre-Reader program. This is for our kids in preschool that are getting ready for kindergarten, okay? And the orange I can read program is for our kindergarten age kids that are working on kindergarten standards. So let's start here with pre-reader and we're going to be focusing on our preschool students. And if you have not already seen this program before, they are going to have daily activities that they work through. It'll take them about 15 minutes. And as they're working through these activities, they're going to be focusing on math and STEM concepts. So it's all right here for you. You don't have to do anything other than make sure they have access to the program and then they can work through the daily activities. They're going to have a math day and a science day. You can see here by these icons when they click into it, they will work their way through each of these activities. They'll get their stars. They're having fun and they're learning. And guess what? As a parent, I didn't have to do one thing. It's all right here for me. Okay. All right, so we want them to be working through that. Now, the I Can Read program, again, is going to be nice for our kindergarten students or students working on kindergarten standards. Have your kids in the program at their challenge. If they need something a little more difficult, go ahead, move them up a level and have them work on that. If they are having gaps and it's a little too challenging for them, it's okay to move them down and then they can work their way and progress their way back up. There's no right or wrong way for our kids to be using this, all right? Now, in each weekly unit, of course, they're gonna be learning about reading and writing, and that's important too. Um, but every week, they're going to have a wonderful day focused on STEM, where they get to learn about an alphabet animal from our alphabet animal book series. And they're going to have wonderful activities that are going to connect the concepts for them, help them demonstrate their understanding and get to explore that a little bit more, okay? So even in I Can Read, we're gonna be focusing STEM and we're gonna make sure that our kids are getting some exposure to those wonderful STEM concepts. All right, we're gonna go back to our presentation for just a moment. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about some other resources that we've developed for you to make it even easier for you to spend time on science with your students. Okay, so I just shared with you what you can do in the different apps and I have them listed here. So as you um, get access to this presentation, you can always refer back to this and this is gonna jog your memory of the things that I just showed you in each of these various programs that you can do with your children on the program to support STEM and math. So let's talk about experimenting. 
there's no better way to create strong connections in, in the brain than to create memories, to actually experience it. If I actually get to go stand out in the snow, I'm going to understand it so much better than if somebody tries to explain to me what cold feels like. Okay. So let's experiment. And we have created um, four ways for you to do fun, creative things with your kids that are easy, inexpensive, and right at your fingertips. Um, I'm going to go through each one of these uh, very quickly and show you where to find them. And remember, if you don't remember anything from this video, that's okay, because you can go back to our article and we'll have all of the links there for you to get to it very easily. Now, for our preschool children, we have Together Time in Clever Kids University. For our older kids, we have learning labs in our physical science and engineering books in the Footsteps to Brilliance program. We've even created read aloud videos where you can listen to a teacher, read one of our books aloud, and then kids can go into the program, reread it and work through the book units and have fun learning about it on their own. And we have created fun family Friday activities. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll get a reminder of this, but I'm also going to show you where you can find these at the click of a button on our website. Um, but these are going to be experiments and things that connect with what they're learning in the program, um, but are off app experiences that build those memories that give them first hand look at science and math in action. Okay. All right. So how do we find these? Well, I'm going to go back to the program where we left off was in the I can read program. I'm going to switch apps now and I'm going to open up the pre-reader program. If you're on a smart device, just go to this app. You don't need to um, go to any of the other ones. Just go straight to the Clever Kids University preschool app on your phone or on your tablet. And you'll see together time right here in the left navigation bar. And when you click on that, it's going to bring you to simple, fun activities that you can do with your kids that relate to what they're learning in the program. This does toggle between English and Spanish, and you can print it as needed. So here's our, here's what it looks like when I toggle into Spanish. And if you want to print that, simply click the print button, and it gives you to in a format that you can get over to your printer. Now, as I look at this one and I scroll down, you'll notice that this week there is an activity around shadow shapes, okay? So it's all built in there. It's gonna happen naturally. Again, these are things you can do at home, in your car, um, outside, it's very simple. Notice you just need a flashlight and some empty wall space. I'm pretty sure we can all find that somewhere around the house. And now we just step-by-step -step walk through the activity with our children, okay? So don't forget about together time. Those are fun things you can do with your kids. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is in the blue Footsteps of Brilliance app. So I'm going to switch over here. And um, we discussed the learning labs that are available in our um, engineering uh, and physical science books here. So on the blue level, I'm going to click onto that blue level. I'm going to come into our physical science and engineering books. And I'm going to pick one of my books. These are book, book units, just like you're used to it. You are going to want to have your child read through the book. I'm going to use the arrows to tab through here. Okay. So they'll read through the book. They can touch uh, any of these illustrations and have them read aloud. The entire thing can be read aloud if they need it. So in this case, we're going to be learning all about magnets and how they work. Okay. So have your child spend some time going through this. They don't need to rush. Um, if they need to take a break and come back tomorrow or the next day to finish the book, that's okay. Um, but once they get through the book, they're going to have activities. We always want them to work on the quiz games. And then of course, this is the learning lab area that I mentioned to you. In learning labs, these are step-by-step -step activities. You'll notice that these pages are printable, so you can print these out. Students can write in these boxes. And as you work your way through the steps, you'll notice that we have um, very easy and fun experiments that they can do to learn about 
in this case, magnetism or whatever topic they were studying for the book. Okay, here they're going to need one or more magnets, and they're going to need a ver to find a variety of objects that are metal and not metal, and then they're going to go test to see which ones are, are magnetic or not. And then they can draw pictures about the things that they learned. Okay, so again, this is going to not only support the science concept that they've been learning about, but it's going to give them an opportunity to write about it and draw about it, which is going to be a higher level of thinking, which is going to help them apply their learning, and it's going to create those stronger connections in the brain. So I encourage you to work through the learning labs. And remember, it doesn't all have to be done in one sitting. Do it a little bit at a time. Give kids' minds an opportunity to uh, think about what they have learned. And then when they come back the next day and they have to recall that, that's going to create strong connections in the brain. So little short sessions are going to be better for their learning, and it's going to give them an opportunity to build strong connections in the brain to those ideas. Okay, So those are the learning labs. And again, I encourage you to do those with your children. Now, I promise that I would show you where you can find uh, the, the story times and the read aloud videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our help tab over here. If you're in the app, you might see help over here with Sherlock or Sam, depending on um, which app you're in. But however you get to help is going to take you to the same place. And it's going to open up for you the Footsteps of Brilliance knowledge base. And in this knowledge base is a wealth of information for you as a parent. There are how-to articles and videos in our parent university. You'll notice that we have our reading and writing workshops right here. Very soon, you'll have a link for this workshop that we're doing right here. You can click on it. You can watch this video over and over again. Um, you can get access to all of the resources that we shared with you in the previous um, workshops, and we'll continue to add those as we go along. And certainly, and most importantly, are the story time and read aloud videos for our children. Um, you'll notice we have our alphabet animals here. We've even done read alouds and um, some experiments that they can watch in videos for our physical science and engineering books that I just showed you. So just simply click on the link. And so here's Ali Al the alligator and it's going to pop up the video. And now you can watch one of our master teachers read the book aloud for the children. And then they can go right into the app. They can click on Ali alligator and work through her book unit on their own. So again, we're trying to make it easy for you. Um, you don't have to do too much thinking. You don't have to be an expert in alligators or whatever they're learning about magnets or gravity. Um, it's all there for you. All right. Now, last but not least, I promised I would show you where you can find the fun family Friday activities. Again, you're going to want to follow us. Just simply follow Footsteps to Brilliance with the two in the middle on Instagram. So you'll get reminders that way. Or you can come directly to the Footsteps to Brilliance website. And I'm gonna type in blog here, but you'll come to the Footsteps to Brilliance website. You'll click on the blog and voila, here are our Family Friday activities. You can see all of them by clicking on Family Friday in the menu over here. And if you wanna get notifications when a new one is uh, loaded in here, go ahead and sign up for it right here. It's very simple. And when you click on the Family Friday link, you'll be able to see everything that we've created. You'll notice that we have these in English and Spanish, so feel free to do them in the language that is most comfortable for you. There's a wonderful about Ursula the Umbrella Cockatoo, and you get to make a fun little birdhouse. Simply click on it, and it's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions to create or complete the experiment that is included for that Family Friday activity. 
How cute is this? And I can see that this child even put a rocket ship on their birdhouse. Okay, so those are four areas that you can find to get simple, fun ideas of things that you can do to support science and math with your children. And never fear, come back to the knowledge base article for this um, workshop and I will have the links there for you for all of these resources that I just shared with you. Okay, so just a quick reminder that short sessions are best for growth. So just find that time each day that works for you and your family, for your kids to spend time in Footsteps to Brilliance. Um, 15 to 20 minute sessions, three to five days a week have been proven to make a difference in your children's performance and outcomes at school. So just spending a little bit of time each day and making sure that we're working it into our routine is the best way to make sure that we don't miss it. Now, what if we do miss a week or two or a day? Don't worry about it. Just start where you are, pick up where you left off and keep going. We're building that nice foundation for our children and every little bit that we do adds to their bucket and builds that strong foundation for them. So don't beat yourself up if we miss days. Let's just get back on the horse or back in the saddle, as they say, and keep going. I do want to reiterate again that having a positive mindset around math, science, technology, and engineering is the best way to help our kids be successful. So go ahead, offer praise and celebrate when they're successful, but be sure to reassure when difficulties arise and keep it positive, help them through their struggles to find the answer. Don't give them the answers, but let them learn on their own and let them come to their own conclusions. This is going to create those strong connections in the brain and it's gonna set them up to have a love of learning in a positive environment where they feel encouraged and they know that those around them are supporting them, okay? Now, remember I told you if you need help, um, you can always email us. So send an email in English or Spanish to support at footsteps to brilliance.com and we'll respond to you and get you the support that you need to be successful. This can be any question that you have. It doesn't matter if it's related to technology or questions about what to have your child do. Just ask the question. We're here to help. The help site that I just showed you can also be found at help.myftb.com or just click on Sherlock um, in when you see him in the app and he'll get you where you need to go. All right. So, um, remember I told you we were going to talk about what to do if your child doesn't have a login or doesn't have an account or what to do if you're a parent and you want to have your account and connect it to your children's account. You're going to go to my ftb.com forward slash San Bernardino County and simply follow the steps there. That's all you need to do. And that's probably the only thing that you need to remember of this entire presentation today is to go and get yourself registered, connect with your students who might already have accounts and create accounts for those that don't, okay? And I would simply want to leave you with my favorite quote of all time from Blaise Pascal, a popular French physicist and mathematician. And he said, I bring you the gift of these four words. I believe in you. And I believe in you, families, caregivers, and parents, in your ability to create a science and math mentality in your children. I believe in your children that they can do this. And I thought that I would share with you a picture of a very early digital calculator that was created by Pascal for his father, who was a judge in a tax court in France. And he wanted to find a way to help his dad to do arithmetic easier and make math easier for his father. So he created this for him. Um, the sky's the limit for our children. We have no idea um, where they might go or what potential or possibilities might open up for them by simply sharing a positive mindset, a belief in them and letting them know that we know they can do hard things 
they can do math, they can do science, and they can do great things just like some of those folks that I shared with you earlier. So thanks for being with us today. We wish you all the luck. We want you to reach out to us if you need help. And please do not forget to join us for our future series. We are excited to meet with you. And our whole goal is to make sure that you are finding simple and easy ways to develop strong literacy foundations. And today, of course, science and math foundations with your children. Bye-bye for now.